Gelir Resulat inşallah. Ağudu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulihil kerim ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ecma'in. Rabbi şrah li sadri ve yessir li amri ve hlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma akhrijna min zulumatil wahmi ve akrimna bi nuril fahm. Ve iftah alayna bi ma'rifatil ilmi ve sahhil akhlaqana bil hilm. Ve ja'alna mimman yastami'una al qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana. اللهم اجعل اعمالنا خالصه لوجهك ولا تجعل فيها حظا لغيرك وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته هاز ايفري وان ذس ويك الحمد لله وي كونتينيو وي وي ليفت اوف وذ صرف باذن الله تعالى دو هاف كلاس لاست ويك نو ذا ويك بيفور Holiday is so good. Even forgot it happened. <laughs> that. We continue with Sarf bi Allah Ta'ala. What were we doing? We first learned our two main scales, right? The past tense fa'ala scale. Past tense when you know who the doer is. And then we did the present tense scale yaf'alu. Also when you know who the, the doer is, right? I saw you guys doing some stuff with Molina Khalil this morning where you were interacting with those verbs and seeing them in a sentence structure, how to identify who's doing the action uh, when there's no action or when there's no doer mentioned on the verb. Um, yeah, and who the done upon is. So t- in Sarf, we're busy dealing with something slightly different, right? We'll get back there in a moment. So before we do that, let's just say our scales quickly. The first one, fa'ala and yaf'alu. There is no escape. Come on, bismillah. Fa'ala, everybody. Fa'ala, fa'alu, fa'alat, fa'alna, fa'alta, fa'altum, fa'alti, fa'altunna, fa'altu, fa'alna. Present tense, yaf'alu, yaf'aluna, taf'alu, yaf'alna, taf'alu, تفعلون تفعلين تفعلنا أفعل نفعل. and then what's that one that we learned last week? what 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 what's it called now again? what's it called? it's mild here, right? it was mild, it was past tense, but it was also مجهول. what does مجهول mean now again? It's a passive form, or the doer is unknown, right? But how did it sound? Fu'ila, right? So everybody say that scale for me, please. Fu'ila, fu'ilu, fu'ilat, fu'ilna, fu'ilta, fu'iltum, fu'ilti, fu'iltunna, fu'iltu, fu'ilna. All that change was just the harakat, right? Instead of being a'a, fa'ala, it changed to fu'ila. All right. So we dealt with the fi'al maldi and the fi'al mudari. Okay, we just said those scales now. Here's a new verb for the day, just to practice our scale again. La'iba. To? To play. So everybody say that for me. La'ibna. La'ibta. La'ibtum. La'ibti. La'ibtunna. Laibtu, laibna. One more time. Laiba, laibu. Laibat, laibna. Laibta, laibtum. Laibti, laibtunna. Laibtu, laibna. And the present tense will be what? Laiba yel? Abu. How do you know? Did you check it before? No, even if you didn't check it before. That's a good guess. Usually when the verb is of that form, la'iba, then the present tense is uh, as a fatha in the second root letter. Usually, it's not always the case. Right? Like hasiba yahsibu. But in the case of hasiba, you can also say it yahsabu. So most of the time, that's just a learning patterns type of thing. As I the rule, that's a good guess. So let's see. Say the present tense for me. Yal'abu. Yal'abu. يلعبون تلعب يلعبنا تلعب تلعبين تلعبين 
تلعبنا ألعبوا نلعبوا يلعب يلعبون تلعبوا يلعبنا تلعبوا تلعبون تلعبين تلعبنا نلعبوا لعبة means what now to play how do I say we are playing we are playing نلعبوا how do I say we played past tense لعبنا لعبنا okay just to run through those things here the differences between the fi'al maldi and mudari' and that's why I asked you that question just now لعبنا as opposed to نلعبوا because you know the present tense must have one of these letters right present the past tense will start with the first root letter um, you must know the form you know the things that can be attached to the end um, we must know how to change the root uh, how to change the action being done by changing the root letters and then you must know that the second root letter the ain kalima can have a different vowel as opposed to what we're going to today in the fi'al majhul we already learned the fi'al majhul the concept right a fi'al ma'loom is a fi'al where the verb where the doer is known so before we got to this scale, we were, busy, we were buzzing ourselves with the fi'al ma'al. We did the maldi, past tense, and we did mudari'ah. But if you actually wanted to explain it in more detail, you would say the first one was maldi ma'loom. And the second one was mudari' ma'loom. Now we're doing something different. We're doing maldi Majhul, when the doer is not known. So we had this example um, that we checked on the board the last time, right? Um, and this is similar to what you were dealing with this morning with Malana Khalil. I had assumed it was done before, but uh, just to recap, what does the sentence say? Nasar al al So if you look at that in light of the lesson you did this morning, very easily, you can see what? Who's the fa'il? Al-mudarri? So, why it's in? It's in halat al What's the maf'oolun bihi? At-tilmi? The. Why it's in? Nasr. Right. And nasra is my fi'al. That's what shows me it's a jumla fi'aliyya. Nasr al-mudarri su tilmi The teacher helped the student. The next sentence, how does the next sentence look? Nasarat tilmida. Nasarat tilmida. Okay, what's the maf'oolun bihi in that sentence? Firstly, I have a fi'al, right? So it's a jumla fi'aliyya. Uh, what's the maf'oolun bihi in that sentence? At tilmida, it's in nasb, easy to see. Follows the rule you learned this morning. What's the fa'il? Did you do that with Mullah Khalil this morning? No. no. Okay. Do you see a, 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 a fa'il anyway there? No, it's not there. But I know what type of verb is this here? Nasara. It's a fa'il, maldi, and ma'loom or majhul? Ma'loom. If it's ma'loom, I have to know who the doer is. If it's ma'loom, I have to know who the doer is. If the doer is not mentioned here next to it, like we had in our examples this morning. If it's not next to it, or before that, if it's not on it, for example, I had nasartum. Uh, nasartum will mean what? Nasara, nasaru, nasarat, nasarna, nasarta, nasartum. What does that mean? You, many males, help. If it's on the verb like that, then I already know who it is. You, many males, did the action of helping. So then you, many males, will be the fa'il. If it's not on the verb, and it's not next to the verb, to the left of it like this, it must be there some way. Why? Why? Because it's a ma'loom verb. 
because the form of the verb shows me that it's a ma'loom verb, I know that the dua must be somewhere. So if it's not on it, and it's not to the left of it, then it's inside it. It's hidden inside. So what's hidden inside Nasara? He. So in this case, it's going to be he helped the, the student. But here's the rule. Because I know a ma'loom verb is used, I know that I must know who the doer is. Right? Remember again. Because a ma'loom verb is used, I must know who the doer is. But if I want to say a sentence where the doer is not mentioned, which we had examples of last week, what do I do? I want to say the student was helped. What Remember I told you, if it's ma'loom, I must know who the doer is. But I want to ta- say a sentence where the doer is not mentioned at all. So I can't use a ma'loom verb. I have to use a different type of verb. What kind of verb must I use? Majhul verb. How do I make a verb from ma'loom into majhul? I only change the harakat. So nasara will change to nusira. And there I have my sentence. Nusira. Okay, now you may ask me another question. Oh, do you have a question to ask me? What's the question now? Why is the student is in a rough? That's your, is that the question? It's a very good question. But that you will learn in Nahu. <laughs> I can't tell you now. You see, that's not the dua. It's not the dua. How do I know it's not the dua? Because the verb that I'm using there is a verb that, uh, that where I know when I have that kind of verb, when I have a majhul verb, I don't know who the dua is. So how can it be the dua? Something just fell, took the place of the dua. Tilmidu, yeah, it just took the place of the dua, but he's not actually the dua. He's like a fakie. Eh? This is a fakey thing. Because a rafa usually shows me the prime focus of a sentence. It shows me the subject of a sentence. And so, uh, this sentence here doesn't have uh, your normal fa'il. So something had to take its place. Obviously, if I'm not mentioning the doer, the focus of the sentence can't be the doer. So the focus of the sentence is something else. Yeah. What was the object now has primacy in the sentence. That's why it takes it off. Don't worry about that. You're going to learn it in. Uh, in Nahu. But you can, when you get there now with Mullah Khalil, you can tell him, Mullah, I know that Tanapa now must have been a rough. And he's going to give it a name as well, a different name, not Fahid. Right. The lesson that I want to illustrate from this is what? When I want to have a sentence where the doer is not mentioned, what do I need to do? I want to have a verbal sentence where the doer is not mentioned. What do I do? What must I do? I have to use a different type of verb. I can't use a fi'al ma'loom. I have to use a fi'al majhul. I have to use a fi'al majhul. Last week, or not last week, the week before that, we learned the template of that fi'al majhul. What was the template of that fi'al majhul? It's exactly the same like the fi'al maldi ma'loom, but the maldi majhul just has the harakat changed, that's all. Just the harakat are changed. There's a change in haraka, and remember what we said, any change, sarf is about what? A change in the form of the word, And how that change in form causes a change in in meaning. How that change in form causes a change in meaning. So we had a change in form. What was the change in form? The harakah changed. How does that affect the meaning? Let me put it in simple words for you. What would have been the fa'il is now no longer the fa'il. It's understood as the Them, uh, I'm going to say in meaning it's understood as a na'ibul fa'il. For those of you that learnt a bit more Arabic, you'll know it's other name, it's proper name. What we call the na'ibul fa'il. 
Naibul Fa'il just means the substitute for the Fa'il. But actually, in terms of meaning, it's the thing to which the action is done. The done upon. Right. Another sentence here we have. Kataba al waladu darusa. You must at least you know who the fa'il is. The fa'il is who? Al waladu. The maf'ulun bihi is what? Ad dar sa. What's the fi'al? Kataba. Kataba means to? Right. So the boy wrote the lesson. What if I leave out the walad? Katabad darsa. Now it's going to be he wrote the lesson. This is still a fa'il mention. What if I just want to say the lesson was written? What do I have to do? Change the? I have to change the verb form that I'm using from ma'loom to majhul. How do I do that? Kataba will change to? Kutiba. Simple. So, kutiba darsu. The lesson was written. Important point to note here, the doer is not mentioned. Zaid al Asada. What does that mean? Zaid, you don't translate it, that's a name. Zaid killed the lion. Qatal al Asada. He killed the lion. The doer is still mentioned. If I want to mention without the doer, I want to say the sentence without the doer, what do I do? I have to change the form of the verb. Qatala will change to? Qutila. Qutila al asadu. The lion was killed. Right. We learned the scale. Everybody just say the scale for me again quickly. Fu'ila. Fu'ila. Fu'ilu. Fu'ilat. Fu'ilna. Fu'ilta. Fu'iltum. Fu'iltu. Again, one more time. Fu'ila, Fu'ilu, Fu'ilat, Fu'ilna, Fu'ilta, Fu'iltum, Fu'ilti, Fu'iltunna, Fu'iltu, Fu'ilna. You see, to learn the scale, though it's in soft terms, it's counted as a whole other scale. But it's actually just some harakah changing. Very, very easy. If you know your first two scales, the rest of sarf is a breeze. How do I translate Fu'ila? He was done upon. The action of doing was done to him. It's hard to translate with Fa'ala. Because I'm not actually going to let you translate it. Now let's just look at our other verb, verbs that we had. The v- another verb that we had was Daraba. Another verb that we had was daraba. Daraba meant what? To hit. Daraba means, the full meaning is, daraba means he hit. Right. What if I say duriba? It will now mean he was hit. The action of hitting now is done to him. Right. Darabu. Darabu meant what? They were hit. Oh. Yeah, sorry, no, rather, darabu means they hit. But if I change the harakate to duribu, what will it now mean? They were hit. So that same thing on the verb that once was the fa'il. Because I changed the harakat, now becomes not the fa'il, the thing to which the action is done. Right? In meaning, it's like a maf'ulun bihi. In terms of actual name, we call it something different, but I don't want you to worry about that now. So, you c- all, all that there is to this is, you can do it with any verb. Darabat means what? She. Duribat will mean? She was hit. Darabna, they many females hit. Duribna, they many females were hit. And so we have a new sc- Everybody say that for me. Duriba. Duriba, Turibu. Duribat, Turibna. Turibta, Turibtum, Turibti, Duribtuna, Duribtu, Duribna. Okay. Let's look at Nasr as well. 
just I want you to see a similarity here. We, the first one we did was fa'ala, and we changed fa'ala. The next one we changed was taraba. Right. The next one we're busy working with is nasara. Nasara means to top. But look at the form of the past tense. Fa'ala, daraba, nasara. They're all the same. Right? So this majhul is going to be formed just like that. You just change the harakat. Nasara will become nusira. So say that skill for me. Nusira, nusir, nusirat, nusirna, nusirta, nusirtum, nusirti, nusirtunna, nusirtu, nusirna. Nusirtu, nusirna. Now, nasara or nusira doesn't mean to help. It now means to be helped. To be helped. Right. So translate the following for me quickly. First thing, number one. They, many males, were helped. They, many males, were helped. Give it a couple of seconds. So they, many males, is that wow, it's a nasara, nasara, or nasara, nasaru. So here it's going to be. Nusiru. We were helped. Nusir? Na. You, one female, were hit. How do I say you, one female? T. So, nusir, uh, hit, durib, ti. Right. We were hit. I just have to think about the file. Who is it? Na. That's the whole purpose of learning these, these skills like, like that, right? So, we were hit. I just need to know, what's the, what's the verb to hit? Daraba. I'm saying the action was done to us, so, duribna. I was helped. Nusir? Tu. Nusir tu. Right. And this comes, the reason we learn it as a separate skill, the reason we actually give it so much attention is, it's replete. The Quran is replete with it as well. So, for example, here's one surah. وَإِذَا الْمَوْءُ سُئِلَتْ سَأَلَ means to? To ask. Right? So, سُئِلَ will mean to? To be asked. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here. And when the mawuda refers to a, a baby girl that was buried. وَإِذَا الْمَوْءُدَ And when the baby girl that was buried, سُئِلَتْ what does su'ilat mean? When she, literally translate for me in full, when she, is it past or present tense? When she was asked. Right. However, this is speaking in our present time about something that will happen in the future, about something of the uh, happenings of the time of Qiyamah. And usually when Allah does that, he refers to it in the past tense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it in the past tense. You might have come across it in the surah that you were doing, tafsir of before and tarjuma. Why does Allah do that? In Arabic, a past tense verb can be used to refer to something in the future tense when you want to imply that it's like a done deal. So, the female that was buried, she will, in relation to us, she will be asked. But the fact that she will be asked is so that Allah refers to it as if it's already done. And the rest of the surah, I tell you that because the rest of the verses following the same. Bi ayyi dhambin qutilat. Bi. Ya means, usually it means with. Yeah, you can say for. Ayyi means what? Which. For which dhamb. What's a dhamb? Sin. For which sin? She was killed. So, and when the female that was buried will be asked for which sin she was killed. وَإِذَا الصُّحُفُ نُشِرَتْ Another one. وَإِذَا And when? الصُّحُف What's suhuf? Suhuf refers to parchments or scrolls. And when the scrolls نُشِرَتْ you don't know what, I don't, well, you didn't do nashara with me. Nashara means to spread something out. Nushira will mean what? When the scrolls are, when they are spread out. Nashara means to spread out. So this is the majhul form. When the spreading out is done to the scrolls. 
kushitat. And when the skies are kushitat uh, means to to be peeled away. Kashata means to peel something away. Kushita will mean to be peeled away. So wa sama kushitat and when the skies are peeled away. The purpose of me showing you all of these verses here, all of these verses, is to show you how these majhul verbs get used in the Quran. Here we have in one surah four examples of maldi verbs that are also majhul being used to describe events that are happening here. We know Allah is in control of all of this. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of all of it. But yeah, the focus, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioned. Well, oftentimes when he mentions his adab, he doesn't mention himself. For example, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, Nabbi ibadi, inform my slaves, anni ana al ghafurur rahim, that I, ana al ghafurur rahim, I am most uh, forgiving, most merciful. And Allah says, and my punishment, it is a painful punishment. It's as if Allah removes that punishment from himself and attributes the, uh, the torture of that punishment to the punishment, but it's separate. But when, he spe- like when Allah speaks of his rahmah, then it's always very uh, personal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very personal. So yeah, Allah is speaking about very, uh, uh, like, uh, severe events and very um, terrifying events. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of removes himself from the, from the image. Okay. Before we go there. So now, how I want you to have this organized in your mind. We have sarf. Sarf can broadly be broken down, or our verbs can be b- broken down broadly into two types of verbs. I have fi'al maldi and I have fi'al uh, mudari'a. So past tense verbs and present tense verbs. Past tense verbs now, what I've learned is there's a further categorization. Past tense verbs can be either ma'aloom or majhul. When it's ma'aloom, the same can be said of present tense verbs. It can be either ma'aloom or majhul. So... If it's ma'loom, it will take the form of daraba, or fa'ala, or sami'a, or karuma. Right? When it's majhul, when it is majhul, what happens now? The harakat get changed, daraba will change to duriba. How do I change daraba to present tense ma'loom? Daraba, yadribu. We must still learn how to make it majhul. I can do the same for Nasara. Nasara, when it's majhul, we come Nusira. The present tense will be what? Nasara, Yansuru. How to make it majhul, we're still going to learn. Let's take another verb. Qatala, we said, means to kill. How do I say this one? Qatala, will change to Qutila. Everybody say it for me. Qutila, Qutila, Qutilu. Qutilat, Qulilata, Qutilna, Qutilta. Qutiltuma, Qutiltum. Oh, I'm saying it to the Jews. Sorry. <laughs> That's how I learned it. Say it again. Qutila, Qutilu. Qutilat, Qutilna. Qutilta, Qutiltum. Qutilti, Qutiltunna. Qutiltu, Qutilna. Okay. Oh, Amen. I made a mistake. I meant to use one. The Khalaqa means to create. Right, khalaqa means to create. When I want to say something is created or to be created, then I just change the harakat. Khalaqa changed to khuliqa. That's not what I actually wanted to get to. So don't say this one for now. Take sa- sami'a for example. All the verbs we had thus far. Nasara, daraba, khalaqa, nasara. Uh, what did you want to say before this? Qatala. All of them are exactly the same. The harakat are exactly the same. What about now if I take the verb sami'a? What if I take the verb sami'a with the second haraka as a different vowel? Or kaw? How do I make that majhul?
It will be kurima. So that verb may not necessarily have a, uh, yeah, it may not necessarily have a passive, but at times in Arabic it will be, uh, a passive form will be imposed on it, but then there will be something used with it. But if I take for example, sami'a, that can easily be used. Sami'a will be what? Sumi'a. Sumi'a. So despite the fact that in its original form it had a different uh, second haraka, its ayin uh, kalima had a different haraka, it doesn't matter when we go to majhul. So that's the nice thing about majhul. You don't have to go to your dictionary to check up the middle haraka or anything like that. It's always the same. U i a. With that sami'a, sami'a will become sumi'a. Karuma will become kurima if you want. Take any other verb. Uh, hasiba will become husiba. Um, fataha will become futiha. Um, Pick Qara'a will become Quri'a. Ida Quri'a al Quranu. Fastami'u lahu. When the Quran is recited, whoever it, may be, whoever it may be that's reciting it, that's not the point. Ida Quri'a al Quranu. When the Quran is recited, Fastami'u lahu wa ansitu la'allakum turhamun. Then, listen to it, be silent, so that you may be shown mercy. The point here is, just to wrap up this. Uh, Majhul, Maldi Majhul. What do I do? Conceptually. Here's some rules. I want you to write this down. Because you can apply it throughout Arabic, whatever verb form you use. Majhul verb, a Majhul verb will always start with a Dhamma. A Majhul verb will always start with a Dhamma. And if it's past tense, if it's past tense, the ayn kalima will always have a kasra. The ayn kalima will always have a kasra. So I told you two things now. A majhul verb will always start with a Dhamma. Second thing, if it's past tense, the Ain Kalima will always have a Kasra. So basically, that means it's going to make the sound UI. And I can preempt next week's lesson. If it's present tense, yeah, this will tell you how, uh, what's going to happen next week. If it's present tense, the Ain Kalima will always have a Fatha. If it's present tense, the Ain Kalima will always have a Fatha. So if you know the, those uh, three rules, Majhul is a breeze. So now, just based on what I told you now, what will the present, ma- present tense Majhul sound like? Think about it quickly. Yaf'alu, what will yaf'alu change to? It must start with a dhamma. So it's going to be? Yuf. The ayn kalima must always have a fatha. Yuf'alu. Fu'ila. Yuf'alu. Both of them start with a dhamma, right? The past tense will have a kasra on the ayn kalima. The present tense will have a fatha on the ayn kalima. Three rules if you know that you'll not to form any majhul. And I'm not just talking about this first skill, I'm talking about all the other 15 or other 14 that you learn. Right. So, I don't have to spend so much time on that one next week, inshallah. What I, what I want you to do for homework is I gave you a sheet. Um, Yeah, sort of exercise eight. All that there is in here is just a number of majhul verbs. Simply translate them. 
Both sides. Eventually, I'll give you the answers to all of these things, inshallah. Right? Translate the Arabic to English, the English to? To Arabic. Right. What else I want you to do is, now as we start learning more skills, I want you to revise these skills. Again, I reiterate exactly what Mullah Khalil said this morning. This applies more so to sarf than it does to, uh, to nahu. Nahu, you can easily conceptualize the rules and see it in, in action. But in sarf, the word forms need, like, I, I illustrated this to you before, right? But one word in sarf is in fact an entire sentence. One word in sarf is in fact an entire sentence. Um, I can have, for example, Sami'ahu. It will look like one word in writing. It's actually, there's a number of parts to it. But that is actually a sentence. He heard him. It's a complete sentence. So oftentimes when you have a verb in a sentence, if you understand that verb, it's easy to understand the entire sentence. But if you can't quickly understand the verb, grapple with whether it's ma'loom or majhul, past tense or present tense, who's doing the action, who's the action done to, if you can't grapple with that very quickly or understand that and process that very quickly, then it becomes difficult to understand Arabic. But if you can do that quickly, if that's like second nature, then even if there's some complex nahwi structures in the sentence elsewhere, it will still be easy to understand. You'll at least understand, say, uh, 80% of the sentence. Right? So that's why sort of despite the fact that it, that it seems very monotonous and repetitive and easy to learn, the concepts are very small. We change one, we make one small tweak, and then it makes a small change in the meaning, and you know, that's the lesson for the week. The important thing about sort of is repetition, repetition, repetition. Why? So that it becomes ingrained in you. Unfortunately for us, we weren't brought up with this uh, as youngsters, such that it's second nature for us to understand it. For that reason, we just drive it into our minds. Brute force. That brute force learning. So inshallah, my request to you is just do that worksheet that I gave you and say the scales. Whatever word you learnt in sarf so far, actually whatever learnt word you learnt, whatever set of root letters you learnt, just make it into a verb and say scales with it. Right? Um, inshallah, through that, your understanding of Arabic will become very fluid and flowing and easy, inshallah. We're in there for now. What is that? Come on, khair. We're after the da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Just to give you a glimpse of what we're going to be doing in future. Number one, firstly, we'll do the present tense of this majhul. So I just alluded to what it is. We'll go through it, but now that's uh, super easy for you now. Um, but we'll still give it some time, inshallah. Then we're going to go on to how to negate. How to negate. All of the actions that we did thus far, thus far are saying that somebody did an action. When action is being done, how do I say action wasn't done? Um, how do I say action is not being done? How do I say action was not done to something else? How do I say action is not being done to something else? And then after that we'll go on to how to command uh, mothers and fathers and how to, more importantly, how to prohibit. So inshallah. Uh, that will be our core of sarf for the beginning. Once we're done with that, which shouldn't take too long now, inshallah, then we'll probably be into Quran, maybe doing some readers, we'll see. We're in there for now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.